Right, Yameth, how are you doing? Oh, you're dead. Okay, maybe that was too many kobolds? Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. I am Kyle once again, and this is episode 2. Now last time we left off, we comfortably got our game started and the, the release date officially active. We've got players in-game as- ooh, as you can see there's a big giant group of people. That is a- that is a group that is heavy full of fighters and paladins. And now that I'm seeing it, my paladins and fighters look a little too similar. So I might, uh, I might have to look into creating some separation there. Maybe change the helmets. They look really similar. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. What we are going to focus on today is, you know, we're going to watch some players. As, as you can see, we've actually got up here uh, 29 users online, 29 actual subscribers. Uh, we have some really active base already. You can see a lot of them traveling into town for some of those initial quests we created last time. I might actively produce some more roads might be a good idea because there's a lot of traffic lines going on here we'll 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 get into that we're gonna check out the economy a little bit today we're gonna check on some game balancing just making sure that as players start to move into you know defeating their first enemies for example our spiders over here that uh, certain things aren't too strong we want to make sure certain player classes aren't overpowered we want to make sure the monsters themselves aren't overpowered and we want to make sure that uh, you know, nothing's underpowered too, like if something, somebody's dying too much as a certain player class, we're going to change that. We're also going to clean up the town a little bit. I'm going to add some features, I think, in here using some of the modular buildings, uh, as well as some of the other camps. So like the kobolds I already got some stuff I, I did over there uh, in between recording just to test out some stuff. And I really like where it was going. So we're going to look into that as well. But for the time being, uh, let's just look around here at some of our players. Like I said, we've got a lot of fighters and paladins either either wizards are not as popular or people are just afraid that maybe that player class uh, doesn't quite work i don't know over here let's take a look this is captain hector giving away quests and what you can do is you can actively look and see on the stats how many quests have been given out and how many have been completed so you know he's given out four quests a good one to look at would be actually uh, advisor Max and ID over here he's going to have given a ton of quests out and you can see there's little little huddles here where people are socializing look at that oh that's great I don't know what that means but uh, yeah and people are interacting with each other that's so that's so cool uh, all right so let's look at our quest over here advisor Max and ID we can see on his stats he's given out 86 quests already and our game has not really been active for all that that long to be honest uh, 49 completed because his initial ones are pretty easy to do so people shouldn't have any issues completing those first off the bat what I want to do real quick is we have the upgrade option up here because basically I think it's every 100 points up here so right now we're in version 1.0.145 uh, every time I think you get a hundred in the uh, third section here so where it says 145 once we passed 100 I think we had the ability to upgrade I might have to double check that stat could be wrong. Uh, we'll check and see maybe if I, if I get another upgrade available at 200, then that probably means that that's the case. For the time being though, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And yeah, we can add in some extra stuff here. So we can, again, go back to those kind of base stats of our game. We have one point we can add in here. Uh, so we can go again to AstroTurf, Fluff, Hugs, Bling, and Gibbs, and each one of those has a different component that it adds to the game. So when I initially started, uh, Hugs and Fluff were the highest. I added extra Bling and Gibbs, so that was better combat. I added two achievements and loot already. I'm gonna put this one, I think, into Fluff just to add theme and exploration, because I think that's a big part of RPGs in general, and that's the kind of player target we were going towards, as well as the socializing component is a big part of RPGs. As you can see, a lot of the player base uh, were already socializing. Uh, because this is a game that caters to that quite a bit already. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into Fluff. We'll go ahead and release that. And now you'll see we're actually in version 1.1.0, uh, which is something I did not expect, actually. So yeah, we'll see what happens when we hit uh, 100 here again, because that might be the threshold, which means every time we hit 100, we might want to get that upgrade as quick as possible. 
just because I don't want to do, you know, I had 145 and then I did the upgrade. If I do 100, do the upgrade, and then I start over and it's another 100, I might just want to take advantage of the 100. If I do the extra 45 like I did last time, it's kind of like I'm losing out. I could have already been halfway to the next upgrade. So I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Okay, so first things first, now that we've got that out of the way, some of the modular stuff I was doing, and this is just gonna be some upgrades to some buildings already over here. So I had modular buildings kind of built in this cobalt area we put together. This is where the cobalts had kind of taken over this peninsula. They'd taken over where the lighthouse is in town here. Uh, so the theme here is kind of their village that they've built up. And I was playing around with the modular buildings and you can actually get things to kind of tear and, and uh, stagger up across the side of other um, scenery items. So I got the palm tree here and I got it to build kind of like a weird koboldy tower that was built along the palm tree that I thought was kind of cool. Um, there is kind of the weird hang off down here where the pillars that are supposed to be in the ground essentially just kind of look like they're floating. Uh, but I, you know, I can, I can look past that. I think it still looks pretty cool as if it's like scaffolded it, its way up um, with the little huts and everything as if there's like a tiered tower village here. So I'm gonna keep doing some of this right now. Um, and maybe maybe you think this is pretty cool and we can, we can kind of keep using this kind of tiered system in other buildings. I've got some ideas now that I've done it on how it could be done with other building types on other pieces of scenery, maybe on the side of cliffs. I'm not sure how it interacts with the ground per se, but We'll, uh, we'll look at that as time goes on. So in modular buildings, we're just gonna click on like the plus minus boxes, allow you to produce more uh, actual like pieces of it. So if we go like that, you can add on pieces. If you use the minus one, you can just get rid of certain components of it as well. It won't let you split items. So like I can't get rid of either of those two cause then it'll make two separate things, but the ones on the end you can. And so what I'll do, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of that one. Ooh, and I like it. it, the huts, as far as the building production on here, it's just kind of random, so you gotta get lucky that it produces one. Um, but what we'll do is let's go ahead and add, and we'll stack it up, and we've got, there we go, we got another, um, another hut there, which is good. I'm gonna go like that, and then I'm gonna put another one up here so that I can place one. Oh, didn't, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. And yeah, now you can see the hut at the start here is gone. So I'm gonna see if I get lucky. Sometimes you just gotta click in and out several times. Okay, there we go. Got it to finally click another one. Um, so in order to clear that, I can't put one there. I'll have to put one up here and then go out to the side. There we go. And then I'm gonna add one here. I try and build around. Ooh, good, we got a hut there. Oh, it moved it, that was weird still moving it kind of like that hut there i don't want it to keep moving and it keeps keeps doing that i was going to build around it like that kind of although it's not not super centered on it hmm oh and i got rid of the other hut that was on the other side okay let's go like that and then let's add one nope i was hoping to get a hut there keep trying This is something I wish they would kind of put into the game, would be the ability to not have some of these modular pieces be so randomized when it produces like certain building types like that. I wish you could kind of control that, but it's, oh, we got a hut down below. I'm okay with that. That'll work. Now, can I get, uh, I can't see, I can't do that one because it'll separate. So let's do this, let's add Oh, now I got rid of that one again. Dang it. You can see this is a little tempera temperamental, a uh, little bit annoying, but yeah, I did that because I want to get rid of this one. Ooh, we got a hut out of that one. I actually am okay with, with that. Um, can I, I can get rid of that one. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Okay, now we're talking. Uh, let's get rid of that. There we go. Got two huts up there. Now... Let's actually, yeah, let's add one here and here, and then we can actively actually get rid of the 
bottom ones. There we go. And we'll get rid of... Uh, that one needs to be there, which is fine. Now, if I add one here, is it going to move the hut? Ooh, it get rid gets rid of them. That's not good. That's bad. Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, yeah, we got one there. Nope, that got rid of it. That, this is the frustrating part. Okay, let's put a thing there. So that then maybe I can add up top here. If we get lucky with either one of these spots. Okay, there's one there. Now if I get rid of this one, it keeps the hut. That's good. Okay, this I'm this I'm liking. Now let's get rid of these. Okay, now we're starting to look like we're getting somewhere. Now if I add one on the side here, okay, good, that keeps that hut. Should keep it there too. Let's add another tier up. And then we'll head this way. I want to keep, yeah, we'll keep that flat like that. Let's add one here. And then we'll try and go up again. It would be nice, actually, if... Let's add one there. Ah, oh, crap, that got rid of the hut. This is what I'm talking about. It's really temperamental. Oh, okay, we got, well, we got one there, but I want to go... I wanted it to go higher. Still going to give me one there. Oh, there we go. Okay. If I go like that, now if I, what if I add one here? Ooh. Okay, okay. I see you, game. Let's not, ah, dang it. I hate, uh, okay. Well, hmm. Let's just go up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Actually, actually. If I add one, Let's see, if I add one here and above that, oh, that gets rid of the first one. I don't, I don't want to do that. I really want the one on the first level. Okay, so that keeps that there. Okay, I actually really like where this went up here. Can I add one safely here? I can. Now, if I want to go like this. Ooh, ooh. Now we're talking. Can I get one here? Are you gonna give me, oh, you're gonna give me a triple hut. A triple hut. Now if I get rid of this, you can get rid of the hut. Okay, you do. Yep, yep. Okay, that's not a problem. I think, I think I am kind of liking this a little bit. So we'll keep that one like that. That, uh, that tree looks like it's got its tiered system there. All right. Now, palm trees don't seem to delete anything if I put them in. Whereas if I put the modular buildings in, next to the palm trees, they get rid of them. I do want more palm trees. I'm going to add in a few extras here. So we get a little tiny bit of a canopy going here. I'll do some different types. Uh, so they're not all completely identical. But I'd like this to be way more interactive. I want, I love the, if I get a bent palm tree here, I love the ones sticking out of the side. I love going to beaches where you see that kind of thing happening. That's super cool. Yeah, so we'll create a little bit of a canopy here. Actually, let's get rid of this one. Here. Good. That way there's some open space in here, but there's like clusters of palm trees. Yeah, that looks much better. Now the other reason I want to do that is because I want to create a little more interaction with some of these tiered cobalt villages. Come on, game. Yes, there we go. That's what I want, like way up there next to the coconuts. It is kind of building, yeah, it is kind of putting out the ground, I think, a little further, which is fine. I'll just have to expand our cobalt ground, or I could leave it as like maybe a safe patch. 
I don't know. Let's put another one here. Building is, oh, building is too big, really. Can I put one here? No. Oh no, I guess there there is just a limit. Okay. We learned something today. Okay, well I got the hut there. That, that is really cool, I think. That is the kind of stuff I wanted to try and do, was create that normal tower, and then, uh, yeah, have a little bridge going across to there. I think that's superb. Like, maybe that's where the King Kolvold lives. Like, he's got his own little private vista over the ocean, up in the top of a palm tree. That's pretty solid. That is pretty solid stuff right there. Okay, that is now looking pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Little kobold tower villages up in the palm trees. Let's create some kind of additional foliage so that there's more going on here. We can kind of start to cover up some of these weird indiscrepancies, weird components of this. There shouldn't be too much growing here, because admittedly, if this is beach, it's kind of like sand. So I can't imagine it would put one next to the rock there. I think we should probably add more rocks as well. I do kind of like what I did with the rocks out here. Put some more rocks over here on this side. Okay, side note, we're going to detour over here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just put some rocks in. There's actually kind of a beachy look over here. Hmm, I wonder if that was... Can't tell if that happened. I mean, it kind of looks like it happened here. Ooh, let's add a rock. Yeah, that needs a rock right there. A rock like between those palm trees. There we go. Now we're talking. Oh, this is kind of cliffy here. Let's do different rock style. Like this palm tree is kind of growing out of a rock region. There we go. We'll add some more palm trees, I think, over in town, too. I got some modular stuff I want to add in that direction. Now, I do want to take this, see if there's rotational stuff. No, not axes. Translate, rotate. I did notice last time when I placed it, it was a little crooked. That looks pretty straight to me. Maybe my eyes are backwards. Oh, it's not right this direction now. Gotta go forward. There we go. I think that's good. Nice and straight tower now. This item is kind of big. It's uh, like a barrier, but it's huge. I don't want anything that huge. We definitely don't want a trebuchet. That's that's excessive. Siege tower? Nope, nope, that's wrong. Okay, maybe I can take this. And let's see if I can modify anything with the positioning. Can I lower it? Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yep, uh, no, translate, yeah, translate, rotate. Rotate it this way, there we go. Yeah, that doesn't look quite as excessive now. It's kind of hidden in the ground, looks like they've been staked in and it's not overpowering in size. We'll just do that a second time here as well. Good, that looks good. Now there's like a little barrier here. And for these little ranger guys, I did notice, I don't know if this is new, because I don't remember it previously. There's little tents. So yeah, maybe these guys have a little 
tent they use here. Well, maybe one of them sleeps, the other one stands guard. Let's rotate one more time, like that. There we go. I got little items. Oh, that barrel's too big. What is that? Is that like a coiled rope? I just noticed there's the option to scale stuff. Oh my gosh. I can make things tinier if I need them to be. This is amazing. This, this, if I had known that for these, I would have done that, but I mean, they're fine now. But like barrel, you can make barrel smaller. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, this changes everything. I can add like little supply barrels and then can I can I get the barrels to stack? I can get the barrels to stack. Stacking barrels, 10 out of 10, game of the year. Right there. It's all it's all we could ask for. Oh, we can do it to the crates too. The crates are actually already pretty good size. Maybe we do scale them a little bit just so they look like they're more carrying size boxes go ahead and rotate it slightly there we go now we're talking let's make one slightly bigger crate maybe this is the different different supplies we'll put him over here it's, I'm just you know crates obviously not a him but you never know oh big stack of barrels we don't need a big stack of barrels that looks like a pot of something uh, ooh, a banner? Do we need a banner? I think a banner would be would be good. This would like let people know that this is a camp of, of specific sorts. Yeah, let's just go ahead and put a banner here next to the side of the road. That looks pretty good. Now this looks is starting to look like a little camp. Got different, uh, more of a square crate here. Let's go ahead and put some square crates. down and we'll stack we'll stack crates too yep gotta gotta stack the crates perfect there we go now they got all their supplies for their little uh, base camp here keeping their eyes on the kobolds Ooh, I think kobolds would have spiky spiky walls yeah that that seems to make sense so we're gonna go ahead and Put some spiky walls. There we go. Now there's definitely a distinct line drawn in the sand uh, for players to kind of know like, okay, if I go in here, there's probably going to be danger. That's a bad thing. Bad place to go. Except if you're getting the quest and you've got to, you know, get in there and do things. All right, we might add more to this at some point, but I think right now I really like the place that it's at. So if we hit the interact button over here, we actually get the ambient sound of the wind again, which doesn't always happen in the game. Uh, but we'll also see, we won't see the big red blob on the ground from where the cobalt zone is dictated. We still get a line, but we don't, the ground is normal colored and we can kind of see what the area actually looks like. And, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I'm wondering if we need to go denser. Do we need more kobolds? I mean, I do want there to this to be an area where you potentially have to fight several at once, and I mean, there are definitely clusters like this area. So maybe maybe it's fine. I think we'll leave it for now. Ooh, this does actually bring up a point, though. I can make an elite monster, like a king kobold. I did talk about having a king kobold. So maybe he's down here by his main tower. Yeah, let's make a king kobold. We won't have a quest for him, uh, so there's nothing attached to it. But if players want an extra challenge or they do find themselves over in this corner, they're just gonna happen to come across a kobold that is twice as strong as a normal kobold, which he's probably not too much tougher than say the bears we made on the other side of the forest. But you know, compared to the other kobolds, if you get teamed up with a couple kobolds and this guy, and they're all on you, you you're, probably, you're probably dead. You're probably gonna die. Now realistically, we could make a kobold quest giver that's maybe like hidden somewhere. Yeah, like a guy that's like, oh, he's like leading the kobold revolt. Like what happens if 
Oh, this is this is great. I've got an idea now. Okay, I cleared away some of the kobold zone so that there's a area where there's not a monster zone. And I'm going to put a kobold quest giver. He's going to be like hiding. Yeah, well, let's make him hiding behind this bush. We're in the corner here. So if people happen to find him, they're going to be kind of given a little secret side quest. Oh, dang, he's actually level 11. He's the strongest of the kobolds, technically speaking, I guess. But we'll ignore that. And his name is Teravess the Wise. That was the generic name that was placed on him. I like the sound of it. The Wise seems good. He's the wisest of the kobolds. He's going to have something additionally for our players to do. So I'm just going to have him have the one quest for now. Let's edit. And it's literally, he's going to, he's leading the kobold revolt. And uh, it's basically, he wants you to go kill uh, this guy. Strongarm Idsap. We can change the guy's name, but Idsap might be a good kobold name. I don't know. I'm not familiar with kobold culture for that matter. Now, because this guy is a kobold, he does not have really any money to give you. He's hoping that you're just going to help with the cause. He'll give you one gold, but uh, 500 experience, I think. I think this is a good uh, good experience bump as a side quest to just kind of give you the opportunity to, to level up a little bit faster. Good. Now, the danger is a 10.0 because that basically means for uh, player levels, that's going to be really hard to do. We don't quite have the ability to do grouping up, so players can't really form parties. Uh, but when they do, that'll be one where I think they definitely want to form parties once we get that addition in our game, uh, which we might be able to do relatively soon. Because we're doing an RPG, we might want to have parties uh, as one of our additional pieces that we add in pretty quickly. We do, actually now that I see it, well, it does say next feature at 1.1.100. So if we place literally 44 more items in the world, we're going to get that next level up. So we're actually progressing pretty well to the next uh, point where we get to upgrade. But I think this area is good for now. This is a good ending point for the kobolds. Okay, I want to try and take the same level of attention I took over there and put it into our starting town in Brightwood. So first things first, let's go ahead and just check. Um, let's change some of the names of these places. We're gonna call this the Brightwood Tavern and just the Brightwood Inn. I know these are generic names, but for the time being, totally fine. Our potion shop. Let's actually look at our trainer down here. So our trainer's name is Agent Super. That is a very strange generic name that the game came up with. He's now gonna be Alchemist Fargus. That, that kind of rolls off the tongue a little better than I actually thought it would, but uh, yeah, Alchemist Fargus. Oh, I'm pressing extra buttons. Don't do that. There we go. And then we'll make the potions. It'll just be Fargus's potions. There we go. Uh, our trainer for our fighters, he is actually called Unhappy Torin. Okay. And our paladin is... Caricia the Wise. Okay, let's see. We'll call this New Ventures Blacksmith. Yeah, New New Ventures Blacksmith. This is uh, oh, that's just that's just what it, yeah, New Ventures Blacksmith because all new adventurers are going to come here at some point and upgrade their gear. And then our shop over here, uh, not Coastal Shop 1. Our little guy is Squire Molina. Squire Molina. This will be Molina's Curiosities. Curiosities? No, I-E-S, right? Ooh, I don't have enough space. Well, that's problematic. Maybe the blacksmith got cut off too. Okay. We'll call it... Uh, not, we'll call it Coastal Curiosities. Can I fit that? I can, perfect. All right, we'll just call this New Ventures. Just New Ventures is the name of the business and I keep pressing extra buttons. New Ventures is a blacksmith, there we go. 
I think it's only fair that we add in some crates and stuff additionally over here because obviously there's going to be lots of goods from this person that came in to sell their stuff and buy stuff just like we did in that other spot let's go ahead and add some barrels and whatnot we'll stack some as well there we go now oh here's a question now if i go like this can i rotate this Yes. Like that. And then we're going to raise it up. Oh, it's actually hollow on the bottom. It doesn't have a covering. All right, game devs. You got to make sure that everything's enclosed. Now if I turn the barrel on its side, it's awkwardly got a hole. All right, we'll go like that, so at least that way it's covered up. But now we have a barrel on its side, which looks a little a little cooler. All right, this person was by themselves, and I'm thinking this tent might be too big now. We'll get rid of that tent. And just like our camp over there, let's add this little tent. Actually scale it up too. Let's make it a little bit, there we go. A little bigger is, is nice. Can I? Yeah, let's maybe go a tiny bit more. Yeah, well, maybe that's too big. 1.6. Yeah, that's good right there. We'll just create that tent. That's a little bit more of a temporary establishment for sure. It's not like those military-grade tents over there. Let's give this person a roll of rope. Just some extra. Yeah, there we go. Put some crates down by their cart. Yeah, I think that's that's coming together a lot better. We can actually place stuff under here too. There's a storage section. Another little crate there. Oh, that's not really where I wanted that really in here by their stuff. There we go. Better. Then I think we should have some some light posts. Not really a nighttime feature in the game as far as I know, but uh, I think it's only right and fitting that there are Kind of lights set up across town. Let's ooh, let's put it right here in this groove. Actually, no, we'll put one there. Put another one over here. And then I'm thinking the reason the road travels this way, the reason these buildings are set up in that fashion, is actually because there's a giant rock here. That's a simple reason for that. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm gonna grab a modular building. Now, ooh, actually modular buildings apparently. Oh, it won't let me place it there because the blacksmith is there, I guess. But I can place these in other spots. Let's kind of put one, yeah, I can actually get pretty close to the road. There we go. Let's see what kind of features we can add into this. Let's see, door, yeah, door there. Cool, yeah, you can start to stack some pretty neat little homes here. I didn't want to do that. If I right click, oh, if I right click, it gets rid of them and then I can just add also, that's good to know. Ooh, I like that, that's cool. Although it has two doors, I don't want why is, I don't want a door on this side. There we go. Ooh, and then it gave a little uh, window. Well, that's just neat. We don't need a door here either. Look at that. We've just created a little home in town here. We'll create a few more of these. All right. So I've placed a few down just because. 
Uh, otherwise, they'll get rid of scenery when we place them. So we're going to do a specific move. Yeah, we'll kind of situate these around town. This will be a nice little uh, building here. Oh, we can start to get pretty dang crazy with these things. I'm not going to get too crazy in this town because it doesn't fit the aesthetic, but... Oh man, can you actually do some fun things with that? Just discovered that if you place it down and then build the modular section, you can go over the road. That's pretty useful. I sure I can come up with a reason for that at some point. All right, I think we're getting some stuff starting to come together visually here. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I'm gonna try, see if I can add a path. Yeah, click that, down to here. Let's see if I can get it to come near this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're talking. I think for now, I'll just kind of keep this as a home or, you know, business of some sort. I not I'm not really sure. We don't have to put titles on things. I don't think I don't think you can actually change. Well, you can change them. You can ooh, oh yeah, we can really get detailed here now. Cuz now we can start to think about all the business owners and think like, "Oh, well, so and so is the business owner of this and this is their home and we can oh my gosh. The rabbit hole is endless." Considering the fact that I could get really carried away with some of this stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and let the game play. And uh, I really would like to keep track of what some of these players are doing now. But yeah, our town is really starting to come together. I do wanna add more trees, I think. Let's go ahead and put some more in here. Kinda of create a canopy like we did with the kobold area. And I do want to scatter some around just to make it look like you know the coastal area is somewhat connected between the two points here uh, because yeah I just I don't know it just seems normal that that should be we should be fairly common around here Okay, now, now it feels like a densely populated, densely forested palm tree area. Might add some more rocks in every so often too, but yeah. Now, let's take a look. We've got uh, 69 subscribers out of 100. 70 now out of 100. You can look at all of our subscribers here and see what they're doing. 
Uh, let's look at uh, finances. Now, I don't think this will update until we get a couple of days into this, so we're just going to let it keep rolling. We do have some online buzz for our new game, as well as our rating as 687 out of 1,000. That seems, well, I mean, that'd be what, like a 68.7 out of 100 on like a meta score? Ooh, it's going up. That's good. That's really good. People are enjoying this. Now, let's, ooh, let's add some roads in here. Because clearly players are actively using this road list system so we'll kind of go like that and then no I don't want let's just end that there and then let's put another kind of dividing point have it go like this and curve it and maybe kind of loop oh no that's too severe yeah like that there we go let's see See if people actually followed the roads. Not exactly. They're not exactly road people. They kind of start on it. Are you guys gonna stay on it? Yeah, now they're staying on it. Maybe, maybe it just had to. People had to get used to it first. I don't know. Okay. That being said, actually, now we uh, we have a hundred and one on our game status, so we can actually upgrade again. And we can make friends list, parties, flight paths, world history, badges, PvP duels, or gibs. Oh good, there's tool tips. So combat more visceral with these simple particle effects. Unlocks consensual PvP. Badges allows players to show off their achievements. Every world came from somewhere. Where did yours come from? Okay, so background lore. Oh, so I see it says gives plus five to fluff, plus five to bling, plus five to gibbs, plus five to gibbs. Flight paths, flight paths is just flight paths, which we don't really need yet because we don't have multiple territories. Parties, obviously top of my list. And a friends list. I think, uh, so friends list gives plus five to hugs. That's the social aspect. I want parties because I want them to be able to operate together as teams. Now, I'm wondering what 84 out of 100 subscribers means. Like, is that the cap number of people I can have subscribed? Or is there like a new thing? Oh, there's our game dev going around doing things. He's actually got uh, one bug report he's probably working on. Oh, I, don't, I don't know where he just went. I wasn't paying attention. Anyways. He's, uh, he's doing his job and there's not, uh, there's not a lot of tickets. There's not a lot of bugs. So he's he shouldn't have too many issues. There's a lot of wizards here. All right, let's go look at the combat areas real quick because we should have players over here now. And if we click on our spider territory, we can see the number of monsters alive, number of combats going on, monsters killed 53, players killed today four, pinions, not really any either way. We've had 58 monster deaths and only six player deaths in this first day. So let's keep an eye on that. I don't want a lot of players to die in the level one zone. Um, we can kind of start to follow some of these guys. Maybe we'll see. All right, Dark Rig, Dark Rig you're going to be an indicator. You're a paladin. Your inventory, your weapon is unsuitable. So you haven't upgraded his weapon yet. Oh, poor guy. He's a noob. He's a noob. All right, let's see how this is going. So he killed the spider and didn't, didn't really lose much health. His man is regening. He has 700 experience. Enjoying the scenery. That's good. Let's go see how he does in his next combat real quick. Going for this guy? Who are you going for? Yep, okay, he's going for this guy. So the spider... The spider's doing decent DPS. That was seven damage he took. So as a paladin, he's not having a hard time. So that's good. Paladin seems to be relatively balanced. Let's see if we can find a wizard. Ah, here we go. Here's a couple of wizards. Ooh, if if more than one of them fight the spider, though, oh, this guy's by himself. Let's take a look at this guy. So this guy, he's just taking on two spiders at once, actually. He just fought one. He's finding another one. These guys are going to come in. Who's going to be the first one to this spider? Black Naps, come on, let's see. Okay, are you getting into combat? 
Yep, Black Naps is taking the combat. Okay. Oh wow, the spiders really really does a lot of upfront damage. And resting. Okay, so it doesn't seem one spider's honestly not that much an issue. Our our wizards do the most DPS, but have very little health. Where are these guys going? Ooh, they're going over to the scenery. Yeah, that's that's another thing that'll happen. Is when there's scenery in the game like this. So this is this is actually Maxonides Tower. Uh, when there's scenery, they'll just want to go look at the scenery. If they're the type of player that likes to do that kind of thing. I tat here. Let's look at his. Let's see. So, yeah, the scenery is really nice. That's something he's saying. He fought monsters. Enjoyed the scenery. So he's a guy that likes that kind of thing. You can see he's big on social, he's really happy enjoying the game. Let's take a look at this guy. Really happy, social player, uh, history, scenery is really nice. Turned into quest, enjoyed the scenery, found monster, enjoyed the scenery, yeah. So if they're a social kind of player or they're a player that likes adventuring, it should be something that's going to interest them. Well, we got some socializing going on over here. And when players form parties, you should see them form a party. You'll see them like, they'll start walking as a cluster that's all moving the same direction. I don't know if we'll see one here, but we did allow for parties in our last upgrade. And oh, now it actually has subscribers 107 out of 1000. So it did just kind of increase the number, I guess. So that's good. So at $10 a person, that means uh, every month or whatever the, the charge rate is, we're gonna get uh, about $1,100 a month at the moment. And as subscribers pick up, we should see that number continue to increase. Let's watch another wizard. Are you gonna go into combat? Are you fighting this guy? Nope. You are headed that direction. You are also headed this direction, but you might get into combat with this spider. So it's always interesting to look at the DPS that monsters and players do, uh, just to kind of see what actually happens though in a, in a live battle will kind of give you better information than just DPS numbers. I did make the DPS numbers on the spiders relatively low, I feel like. So maybe I will buff them back up because they seem to be a little easy. So we'll go into our monsters. Let's look at the spider. So the spider, oh, the spider only has 1.0 DPS. What the heck? That's terrible. The bite does one damage. Okay, we're going to make this 1.5. Ply. Now, does the spider have any kind of mana? No, okay, so there's no resources on the spider. That's fine. Spit. Let's actually change the icon here, too. I think that's good. It's kind of like, a, kind of like an Ikor type of di uh, image there. I think that's pretty good. So, two damage. Oh, I guess it rounded up. There must have been an update that changed it to where you can't do 0.5s, unless it was always doing that, and I just didn't realize it. Oh no, actually, I take that back. I'm an idiot. That was the bite I just did 1.5, and it did change it. So we might just have to leave that at 1, but if I want it to be 1.5, I could always just make it 2, and then change the cooldown. Oh, maybe that's what it was. So 1 damage, I had a 2 second cooldown on that. So if I do a 2 second cooldown on this, now the DPS is 1.0. That's what I actually wanted that to be. So that adjusts the total DPS to 1.5. Now the spit, ah, oh, did I not change, did I not change this? Yeah, apparently I've got to make sure I hit apply, otherwise nothing's getting saved. Apply, did that change it? Yes, it did, okay. What other things can I add damage-wise here? Okay, so we can do, let's do a damage over time in addition to this. So let's make the additional damage. Actually, we can just get rid of that. And this will just be damage over time. So it's like a poison effect, basically. So if we do one damage a second, that's still... Oh, so no, it's one damage over eight seconds. So the DPS is like, you know, it's rounding, but basically 0.1. So if we do, let's do six seconds and six DPS. So it's going to do... No, so that's six damage over six seconds. That should be a DPS of one, shouldn't it? I'm a little confused. We're basically saying 10, if I do 10 damage 
over six seconds. That should be more than one DPS, but it's now saying one DPS. This is a little, I'm, I think the math might be slightly off. I do want it to be six damage over six seconds. Oh no, I completely understand now. So it's taking into account the cast time and the cooldown. So the cooldown on this actually needs to be significantly longer than the damage over time. So this is still one damage per second, but total DPS in the grand scheme of everything, because of the 10 seconds cooldown, is 0.4. Now theoretically, this would actually kill a wizard right off the bat, I think, because if they took a bite, got poisoned, took another bite, and then the poison eventually took them out, it would deal eight damage pretty easily. So let's let's fiddle with this. Let's say over six seconds we're gonna do four damage. I think that's a little bit better. That's still a pain in the butt to deal with, but the, the spider should only be able to do it one time throughout combat because 10 seconds is a while. And if, uh, if they're able to get more than one off, that just means the player was taking way too long to take out the enemy. So let's do that. That's applied. Let's add the flavor. Spits a vile toxin at the enemy, poisoning them, dealing four damage over six seconds. Let's go ahead and apply that. And I think that's a good... Yeah, let's not do... Yeah, let's keep it as water. That looks like it's a poisony bubble that's hitting them. That's good. And I like the mechanic. So let's go ahead and that should apply to all of our spiders now, I believe. Oh, don't get too close to the big guy here. Oh, you are so dead. You are so dead. Oh my gosh. Yep, yep, that, that was that was never gonna happen. Ooh, here's a guy that upgraded his weapon. This guy has he's got a shovel. I mean he I mean image wise he definitely has a shovel. I want to see some combat here so I can see how well each one of these players does against these. You're gonna fight somebody? Yeah. Ooh, you're going up against two of them. This might be bad. Oh, he's gonna be double poisoned. I don't know if it stacks. If it stacks between each one of them, that is bad. Oh, you're dead. Okay, so that is something I did not consider, and that's why it needed to be tested. If two spiders attack someone, they both poison them, it's gonna stack, and it's going to obliterate even a paladin, which is supposed to be our tankiest character. This is why we test these things. Okay, I'm still thinking like one DPS, one D one legitimate DPS. So if it's say, let's say it's three seconds, three seconds, three damage. That's one damage per second, 10 seconds still on the cooldown. Oh, I can actually see what it does at each level. Ooh, so depending on the level of the monster, I didn't know I could do this. So level one, Three damage over three seconds. Level two would be 3.9, so it scales up percentage-wise. So depending on the ability of the monster, the cooldown doesn't change. The damage or the time frame in which the poisoning occurs doesn't change. But for the future, as we get higher level monsters, that's good to know. That means, oh man, level 20 monster, these spiders will deal 439.6 damage over three seconds. Holy moly. Okay, let's keep that as that is for now. Oh, I can change what actual level it happens. Yeah, we're gonna keep that. I still want the poison effect, so we'll see how that does. Let's double check this. Let's make this just one damage, but then we'll make the cooldown one second. Okay, so our spider now has 1.3 DPS. Well, let's keep an eye on there. Let's not fuddle with it too much for the time being. Um, we should have lots of testing now that, that can occur. So yeah, we're actually seeing an increase in deaths, but there is a lot more monster deaths too. So we'll, I think if this percentage stays at like 10% player deaths, I think that's pretty good. And again, the opinions, nobody really has any strong opinions either way, which is good. We've got lots and lots of players. We have right now online 135 players. Let's see how many quest Maxinite over here is given out. So he's given out 512, 370 completed. Now, bug reports are not doing too bad. If these numbers get too high and start to fill up, we'll have to hire more game devs to help us out. I'm thinking, do the, mm, 
I need one more palm tree. I've decided I need one more palm tree. I feel like the town shouldn't just start where the first palm tree was. I feel like... I feel like legitimately there should be palm trees kind of out further. There we go. That, that makes more sense. Now the other thing we can do is we want to look at... We want to look at uh, cheaters. Yes, yeah, so if we go interact and then we go detect cheaters, we can then hover over players. And we can see... Oh, there we go. We got one over here. This guy. He's an item duper. All right, so he's duplicating items illegally. Let's click on him. And then we can... We can actually ban him. So he's about to go log out. But let's see. That's, that's pretty sad when you're an item duper and your weapons are unsuitable. Like, who do you think you are? You're not fooling anybody, buddy. Now, we can let the cheaters stay in the game, but um, I have a pretty hard uh, feelings about this. We're going to draw a line in the sand. I am banning you. So we can keep going through. I, I think, you know, it just might mess with the game balance. I don't know what the actual results are if you don't get rid of cheaters. I don't know what the long-term effects are for that in your game. So I'm not super concerned. Ooh, we got people fighting kobolds too. That's good. Oh, there's Toonhole, our first player. There he is. He's got the little star over him. Toonhole, how have you been doing? You've got 1,700 experience. Oh, he's really happy. He's not, he's not addicted. He's not feeling the addiction. He does have a really good score on social advanced gluten scenery. Like, everything's really pleasing him. He's just not, just not addicted to our game, I guess. Well, that's interesting. Let's see how this is working out. Let's see, we got uh, this guy. Oh. Did that, guy, did that guy just one? He just oh he's oh he's doing the shield bash. He's stunning him. Nice, nice. That's cool. I never I never really paid attention to the effect there on the stun. Actually, this brings up a good question on our fighters, because he was just doing that at a distance. What is the so instant cast rain? No no no. Okay, shield bash. Oh gosh, shield bash is not uh, not missile range. It should be melee. Well, I'm glad we found that. We just we just fixed a balancing issue right there. Also, it says stab the target for shield bash. That is not right. Let's go ahead and apply that now. Smash your shield against your target, dealing one damage and stunning the target for two seconds. Good. And then stab the target was on the sword thrust. That mechanic is fine. So it deals damage. That's fine. I'm sure at lo higher levels I might give this guy a, like, bleed uh, ability at some point. So that as they scale up, they have a damage over time uh, function as well. Ooh, let's see. Ooh, this wizard has, like, a lightsaber. Or just a really glowy sword. He's got a really good weapon. How much of an effect does the weapon have on their progress? Yeah, kobolds are pretty easy. I think I should make this denser. I think that should be what should happen, is players should just have to deal with more kobolds. So kobold zone. Yeah, there's very little player deaths, lots of monster deaths. That's unacceptable. We need more players dying. Density, let's go crowded, apply that. There we go. Oh, it just immediately crowds everyone. Oh gosh. They immediately just get, uh, just get ganged up on. All right, Yameth, how are you doing? Oh, you're dead. Okay, maybe that was too many kobolds. You were you were a uh, fighter. You still are, but you're a dead fighter now. This guy, okay, so he's got weapons. It looks like... Okay, so the wizard had, like, a sword, and this guy has, like, a staff. Did he just take, like, a potion? Oh, he's potioning. Oh, that is great. He's actively using components that he bought. He's upgraded his weapon, he's got potions, he's he's playing the game correctly. Let's see, okay wizard, you've got to take on this kobold, and you one shot at the kobold. Okay, well that's, kobolds might be too weak for the wizards, so maybe the wizards do too much damage. Because if I scale up the power of the kobolds, it will actually scale up the power of the super kobolds. Same with the spiders. When I made the spiders a little bit stronger, it means the really big spider also got stronger. He's only got 10 health. What is... Yeah, let's check real quick um, what the DPS on these guys is again. The kobolds have one ability to start with. That's all I gave them. 
I could give them another starting ability, but I think just the candle is fine. 1.5 damage. Let's let's make it two. So we'll apply that. See if there's any other mechanics we can add. We can weaken people. That's interesting. I don't really know what that does. Ooh, so you can choose a percentage to weaken them. Now, is that weaken their health or their damage output? That is a good question, actually. I'm not going to change too much of it. Let's just deal with the damage. We don't want to add too many complex mechanics right now uh, for the, the starting kobolds. You need to change this. It shouldn't be clobber the target. All right, so throws a candle at the target, dealing two damage. I put candle in quotes because it's clearly a stick of dynamite is the, is the point there. Oh, and we need to make, yeah, fire. This should be a different color. Yeah, that's good. That's a little, that's definitely dynamite-y throwing, I guess, maybe. And it should actually be missile range because they're throwing it. Yeah, that'll, that's a good buff right there. So we'll give them a little damage. We give them range. Um, let's, ooh, yeah, let's keep it, uh, well, one second. Maybe that's too much. Let's go two seconds. No, I got it. 0.5 cast. Uh, still a one second cooldown. So that way there's a little break up in time there. Gives us the 1.3 there. That's good. So that's... That is actually an overall buff to our kobolds, who now have an optimal DPS of two, apparently. All right, I think we've done some really good work visually upgrading everything in the towns, in our kobold area as well. We'll probably work on some of these open spaces. This forest over here, I think, should be targeted at some point. Uh, we'll work on our uh, kind of military camp over here and where it is with the... the uh, these are skeletons over here. Well, we actually have some players fighting skeletons. Well, we'll, we'll have to check that out uh, at some point too because obviously we want to make sure the, the skeletons are challenging enough for people. And uh, we might change the density of how much they're showing up as well as some of the scenery. I think we can add some more complexity to this, this area over here. Before we finish for today, there is one thing I know I wanted to do. I decided I was upset with the starting area, so really quickly. I'm going to change it to this one, which is like the overgrown one because it looks more like a, uh, a ruin, which I think kind of fits the aesthetic of these uh, big runey rocks that I put over here. So if I kind of merge these now, that there's a plant on that side. I don't want the plant growing in an awkward spot. Yeah, we'll merge that there, and then we'll put this one on the other side. There we go, just like that. Go ahead and let the game play out so our players can keep doing their thing. Look at how dense this looks. It's getting crowded. This is coming to life quite a bit. Oh, look at all the little XP and the little fight things over there. There's so many so many special effects going on. Oh, somebody died. Somebody died way over there in the kobolds. Sucks to suck, I guess. Got some, oh, yeah, you can see all the combat going on. Ah, that's, that's entertaining. I like that. And we got 200 subscribers now. 150 active online at the moment, too. That's great. Hold on. Max Nitty, how many uh, quests have you given out? 654 quests given, 478 completed. I wonder if you can see like total experience given out. All right, well that's that's pretty cool regardless. Okay, let's um oh this this should actually be rotated a little bit. There we go. We want it facing the doorway like that. Place good. Let's add just some plants. Like the idea of a big tree right here. That's cool. Yeah, like it's grown into and around it. That's how ancient it is. Ooh, I actually like where that tree was just at. Rotate a little bit there. Ooh, ooh, there we go. Yeah, there's some kind of like magic essence going on here. That um, whatever magic was present here that uh, built this is creating like a dense region of the forest trees have grown up around the area. Let's put one out here as well. And, ooh, yeah, there. I do like the shade application. Yeah, there we go, more shade in this area. Now let's just go into the small plants. Let's put some brush and stuff around here. Kind of covering up certain things. 
Yeah, there we go. Put one in right there. Okay, that's good. Yeah, just really overgrown region. That's what we want. Ooh, a big... Oh, yeah, there we go. We got a big tree stump. Like, maybe there was another one back here. But it uh, got destroyed. Maybe when the rift was opened. Yes, the rift opened. And it uh, destroyed one of the trees that was originally there. Now, here's another question. Can I turn this on its side? And is it hollow underneath like other things I've discovered? No, it's not. Great. No, that's perfect. Okay, so can I... Oh, no, it's going to turn it back up if I do that. Well, let's kind of go like that. And then we'll rotate it. Go that way with it. Go there. Yeah, there we go. Now we got a destroyed tree. Perfect. Throw some brush in there. Yeah, we'll we'll add more, I think, through this forest, but I wanted to kind of change the aesthetic of what was going on here at the entryway. Alright, well, I think that looks pretty good. It's, there's a lot better visual look in this direction. So many curiosities to look at. The towers over there makes you wonder, like, oh, I gotta go over there and discover what that is. All right. Okay. All right. Next time, I think what we'll do is we'll probably look into some of the experience and how players are leveling. Uh, we do want players to level. We'll also have to start looking at the player characters and what's available for their level two abilities so that they're ready for those, as well as starting to think about how we're going to progress into a level two territory and uh, what that's going to look like, what kind of territory it's going to be aesthetically by design, as well as some of the quest uh, designs in, in that region too. So we'll start thinking about that stuff. We'll kind of see how players start progressing, how quickly they move through our level one area. But for the time being, I am Kyle. This has been that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2, and I will see you next time.